Life is full of nuanced social interactions. We all evidently come equipped with social antenna that we don't even realize we have. Finding love is the most intricate of them all. But when the way you interact with people is different from everyone else? Love is a very abstract concept that many people with autism have a hard time grasping. There's no way to quantify it. It makes things just that much more complicated. In Autism and Love, filmmaker Matt Fuller gives a new and authentic perspective on the intimate relationships of people with autism and their search for true love. This program is made possible in part by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, the John D. and Catherine T. MacArthur Foundation, and by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you. You, know, it's, you, know, you want me to tell you something really interesting, man? I was going to wear a suit in this interview, but I thought it would have been too much. So I might as well put these nice sweatpants on and this nice shirt on. It's a little too, you know, too too much, I think. But next time, when we have a good interview, I wear a suit. Okay. One thing I will mention is that at times, you, you know, if you ask a question, there may be occasions where I may, it may take me a little while to respond, um, but that's only because um, it's, I'm just trying to process the, the incoming speech and then I'm trying to verbally process the answer. So you may hear a pause, you know, at times, so. I'm from St. Paul, Minnesota. I, I like living in St. Paul. I never knew for sure if I was gonna get married or not. So that is something that um, I never was really fixated on doing. It's always been important for me to have somebody in my life, but whether or not I was married to that person, I wasn't sure about. So what kind of questions you got to ask me? Good, I feel good about documentaries. I'm comfortable with looking at anywhere on the camera, actually, so. Hello? I'd like to buy a cigar. Yeah, this one. Let me, you see, let me see that big one up there. Yeah, I got something to ask you. Did you hear about that one basketball coach that lived a long time ago? What happened to him? The, the Celtics coach, uh -huh. Red Arback, 
Did you ever hear about that guy? No. I I'll tell you what he did. Tell me what you think about this, okay? Mm -hmm. Every time, okay, he was stubborn, arrogant, and he was a jerk, okay? Right. And every time he won a big game, he won nine championships. Okay. Every time he won a big game, he, he, would, smoke sm a he, he would smoke a cigar. It's and a celebration. Hold on, he would rub it in the other team's face. What? Like, it's a no, he would like. Oh, he was. Celebration. How much is this thing? That's nine eighty. Out of ten dollars, twenty cents back. Would you like a bag? I'm good. Have a great weekend. Two. I knew that there was something special with Lenny right away. And he would always like move his hands, like he would like get excited and move his hands. And he was very, always really, really meticulous about stuff, even when he was little, like where it needed to be. He just, when he wouldn't talk, I knew that there was something going on. It's been hard. You've got this kid that doesn't really want to be autistic. And Lenny's smart enough to know that he's different and he doesn't like it. That's a big, big struggle. Sometimes in my life, I try to pretend I was never autistic. Felt like I had to hide it from people. Because if they heard you were it, then they would kind of, kind of laugh at you a little bit. People would think to me like, you know, he's cool. And if they found out I was in that situation, they would be like, oh, he's kind of a weird kid. We shouldn't be hanging out with him. Sometimes I feel a little bit scared because let's say you go, you see a girl and she likes you and all this stuff. And maybe if you admit it, you're autistic, maybe she'll be like, I don't want to be with you no more because you're autistic. I don't know, because that could be a little hurtful a little bit. I'm single, by the way. I've been single for a long time. Had one girlfriend, but it didn't quite that well. I don't want to talk about that. Is that okay? Just, you know, bad memories. She was really not very nice. And I know that sex was a really big issue because she had wanted to have sex and Lenny didn't want to. And they split up for a while. And then when he got back together with her, they ended up having sex. And it wasn't like a good thing. Like I really didn't realize how little Leonard knew until recently. Like he didn't know anything. I just want to tell those young kids don't have sex that, you know, you're going to get screwed one day. When you can have sex with the girl or the guy for both of you, when I feel like it doesn't have to happen the first day, no way. You're, going, you're jumping the gun. You're shooting the gun right away. You got to do it when it's like a couple months into it, man. Or maybe a year. When you get married, that's what I think. Don't have sex on the first date. That's not love right there. That's just, that's not love when you go on the first date, when you meet someone for the first time. Or, that's called reckless love. It's called reckless. He's lonely. He wants a girlfriend. And his dad's not around. And it just doesn't have that positive role model to kind of tell him, like, this is how you do it. This is what you do. This is, you know, he, he's got me. He's got mom. Beth Lindsay is at a National Autism Conference from the Autism Society of America in Nashville, Tennessee in July of 2005. We started calling it a relationship in the fall of that year, maybe three or four months later when we met at the conference. And I, I, I asked her, um, how, you, how would you feel about being in a relationship? She said, well, I'm confused, but I could see this may, be, this may work. She was confused at first, but she could see this working. We'll give it a try. How are you? How are you? 
I think that autism definitely presents unique challenges to our relationship. Our particular routines, rigidities, and our, our particular comfort zones, we're so fixated on, on that it's sometimes difficult to communicate to each other. Oh, do you know? Did I ever tell you um, one benefit, one reason I love jewelry so much is because it gives me a um, a sort of a sh um, a shield to sort of protect myself from sort of vulnerable elements. It makes that, me that's news to me, Ashley. I didn't know that. Oh, really? Vulnerable elements. Yeah, I kind of discovered that after wearing necklaces for the past, you know, the past, especially the last 10 years, I've really been into wearing heavy jewelry and I discovered the reason why it was that it kind of makes me because I feel so vulnerable and feel so um, shy mm -hmm. and, you know, introverted that wearing the jewelry kind of makes me feel that sort of false sense of confidence and it kind of makes me feel less vulnerable. It makes me feel like it's sort of a shield. So to protect myself from feeling um, more vulnerable. Well, it looks like the weather just came on. I was going to ca catch a, a glimpse here and see oh, what he said about I can't, I can't ever interrupt you with the weather. Well, you can always st be near me and I may not talk to you as much. <laughs> yeah, but... but... Mm -hmm. We tried to treat her as normally as we possibly could, all the time making in our own mind for the fact that she might not be able to do everything quite as fast or quite as well or something like that, but just trying to raise her as normally as we possibly could. We all evidently um, equipped with social antenna that we don't even realize we have. We know instinctively when we are getting too close to someone physically, when we seem to be pushing them a little further than they want to be pushed, when maybe we should back off and not be quite so bossy or controlling. Lindsay didn't have the antenna. Lindsay, can you wave? There you go. Say, Lindsay. Lindsay. She just asked me to put a hat back on her. It's sort of mystifying, but the absence of that antenna, very hard. That was very challenging for her. She wanted to fit in. Soul fish with mashed potatoes. Have they got mashed potatoes? Not yet. Are you cooking? My mother is cooking. Oh, uh, okay. Do you ever cook? I cook hot dogs every Sunday. I cook hot dogs. 
every Sunday. When he was young, did you think that he would be capable of a romantic relationship? No, I didn't dare hope. I didn't dare hope. Although uh, his expression was not there, but he had knowledge. But of course, he still does not elaborate and doesn't express himself to, to well to his real feelings. His language is still not up to the way it should be. He talks and he communicates and... But in a certain way. In a certain way. So tell me more about your job, Stephen. Well, I was doing assembly work and I was working in stamps and I worked on trays. What's trays? This means to fold for the, for the United States Postal Service. Oh, okay. And so when you do stamps, what tell me about what you have to do for stamps. To put them in envelopes. How many do you do a day, would you say? Uh, 500. Wow, that's a big workload. Yes. Wow. And how many hours a day do you work? Eight hours. Eight from hours. seven until three. Okay. How do you get to work? By bus. Do you take one bus or more than one? Just a bus, just one bus. One bus. Yes. Oh, do you like the bus? Yes. Our aim was he should become independent. He should be able to hold down a job. That, thank God, we accomplished without him being institutionalized. He's a bad man, this guy. What's up, Mom? Let me say it first. Come on. So we talked about a dating website a little bit. Yeah, I think I might want to do that. What would you put if you were, like, putting, like... I don't know. It's hard to say. I like to keep it private to me and you only. I'm not going to be no joking around. Okay, if you were going to put on a dating website like your interest. Sports. Okay. What else? You put, how come you wouldn't put any of, like, the... Do you think that's nope. silly? I won't do it. How come? Because I don't want to. Okay. That's when it is. But why don't you... You don't want to find somebody that likes that kind nope. of stuff? So what other interests would you put? I don't know. I'll be taking more serious. So you want like a serious girl? Yeah, a little bit. Okay. A businesswoman? No, completely. But I pay for the debts. Me. Hey, that's the way it goes. Okay. That's the way it should go. I'm not going to let her pay for everything of me. You know, I got to be the one that is the more independent one than her. But I don't think that's fair. No, it is fair. It's kind of chauvinistic. Oh, it's not. I think a little bit. What if there's a woman out there that is perfect for you, but she makes more money than you do? Nope. I'll take her. I'm serious. I'll take her. He does not want to be different. He just wants to be like everybody else. He goes above and, like, kind of goes beyond trying to fit in, and everybody, I can see, they're like, why is he acting like this? Like, we all know Lenny's special. So he just needs to be who he is, and he's not. He tries to be something different. I need to be the one making more money. I hear so many things I mean, about, I okay. hear so many YouTube videos about women. 
Okay. No, well, it's woman to send this list. They don't be a broke ass man. Wow. These are the kind of women. No, they're trying to inform yeah. women not to be a broke man, and I don't want to be. I don't want to be a broke man with a woman. Well, I don't want her paying for everything. You don't have to be paying for everything, or she doesn't have to be paying for. Everything. You could be paying for stuff. When you get into a relationship with somebody, you're supposed to be their partner. Partner. Well, I need to be the one doing more. That's the way it goes. That, I don't think that's the way it goes. I think that you're being misinformed by people that are just not really great. I think you're being misinformed. I'm not. I think you are. What if you find somebody, and I'm just saying, if you love somebody, it shouldn't matter. It should be like, you just love her, and maybe one day you'll be making more money, and you guys just support each other in that good kind of, like, foundation. And it is It's, it's it just is. hard. It's just hard to believe it. Why? It's just about being the more independent. But you will be independent. You're going to be independent. That is going to happen, Lenny. Sometimes it takes a minute for people. It's hard. Transition from freaking into manhood, that thing, that's hard. I know. I it was hard. I'm good, though, Mom. Hmm? Trying to be good. Well, trying to get out. I want you to feel good. I'm just going through a little bit of a struggle. I'm down a little bit many times, and it's too tough to... Because I feel like I should be accept doing more and like. Do you think, do you consider yourself like less? Sometimes. Sometimes. Why? I feel different. I feel better. I feel better than being on sometimes. Let's get past this. Let's get over this and get on with it. Because you're freaking awesome. Man. I know. I know. I don't think you do. I, I know. I think you don't. You, you need to know. I love you. He's really down on himself. I think once he's working, he's going to feel better about himself. He's going to feel more productive, like he's out there doing something. Because right now, he doesn't feel like he's doing anything. I always knew I was different. Even before I was informed of my diagnosis of autism, though, I always felt like I was an odd character outside of my my peers but I didn't really understand why I would often get turned away or people would ignore me and I, I, I thought well what am I doing wrong and even after learning about my own diagnosis I still for several years struggled to figure out why I couldn't um, maintain, keep friends, why I couldn't fit in, why I couldn't be accepted. Unfortunately, I think the first impressions I received um, when I was learning about autism were quite negative and I felt incredibly ashamed of being autistic. Every morning when I I look in the mirror before I step outside the house and I think to myself, well, I look okay. I look okay today. And the moment I step outside the front door, I immediately become self-conscious. I've recognized pretty quickly that the way I perceive myself in the outside world is drastically different than the way I perceive myself in my own world. In some aspects, and at some times, I do feel like I have found that personal happiness within myself or that personal peace. It's still very difficult for me to find acceptance of myself. I have just learned to be a good actress.
remember when you first started at work, and um, I wasn't sure. I wasn't necessarily sure what to expect because I, you know, everybody on the spectrum is different, and you, know, you never know if somebody is going to be very outgoing or. You Know, kind of the classic description of someone on the spectrum is not, you know, unfortunately not interested, empathetic, you know, not into. I the sphere, people would be staring at me. That people can see right from me. I think it kind of relates to my frustration I've had over the years of being pressured to fit into the social norm that I'm not good enough if I don't fit in. Have you dated somebody who was on the spectrum before? Actually, all, all the guys at the card day were, yeah, were not on the spectrum. So Dave is the best. And how is it different? To me, it boils down to three things. I have a formula here. It's L plus P plus 2T. So each part is 25%. So you have 25% of the P and L, and you have 50% of the T, which results to what that person's grade would be in terms of relationship and dating potential. Now you're wondering, L is how they look physically, physical appearance and attributes. The second P is the P is personality. What, there's, what is their lifestyle like? And most importantly is T is how they treat you treatment towards you. If, like say for example, if the person is relatively ugly, then they get like a 50% category in the L category, but they have nearly perfect personality and nearly perfect way they treat you, they're going to score pretty well in the overall scheme of things. So the T has greater weight. It's twice as much weight in the formula than the personality and looks is how they treat you. You know, it's funny with Dave, I, he, he's much more scientific and I'm much more artistic. I think Dave is trying his best to understand me. I think he always has tried his best to understand me. I think it's still difficult for him to, to really have that grip, though, of understanding, of why I have my particular issues. It's a very good question whether someone can love you without truly understanding. I still think it's actually possible. Yeah. You know, we have from time to time talked about marriage, and um, if we were to get married someday, and kind of some of the fears we have with that. Um, Uncertainties. I'm, yeah, and I guess where Lindsay would take my name, would keep her own name, and um, talk about like prenuptial agreements and how they'd be written out, and um, financial matters, how they'd be um, managed, um, things like that. Yeah. Where the wedding would take place. Yeah, well, I think um, that's not really fears. I think that's just more of you know, listing the pros and cons, kind of, it's the whole idea of whether marriage is going to dictate that our identities are lost. That's kind of my main fear. I still keep our own identities. I mean, marriage is just a, kind of like a social title we would have, but we yeah. have identities, of course. I, I, I would insist upon it, but... Dave has <laughs> has been through a lot with me, and he's still around. And that, to me, is definitely evidence of of love. I love it when she shows me physical um, appreciation when she holds me, hugs me, kisses me, smiles at me. I always love it when she comes to tuck me in a bed at night. But I feel like she puts me very high on her daily list. I feel like I'm very much important to her and that I'm a big part of her life. 
the T is how uh, also ties in very much to how important that person makes you feel. That if you don't if that you get the impression that person doesn't think you're important, that hurts your T score. When I was first dating her and first I never had stronger feelings for anybody else ever before. The fact that they lasted for eight years, I think it's a, a good sign that things were on a very solid course here. I met Gita 20 years ago. It was on, Feb on February 7th, 1993. What day of the week was that? It was on a Sunday. What did you say to her when you first met her? Hello. And what did you think when you first met her? It's nice. It was beautiful. Are you in love with Gita? Yes, I'm in love with Gita. What does that mean? I don't know what it means to fall in love, to give a, give a kiss and a hug. How do you know when you're in love? I don't know. Somebody suggested they knew of, of Gita. He said, maybe these two together, these two will get together, maybe they'll make it a, they'll make a couple. They were kind of complimenting each other. Gita is very verbal. That's what Stephen is lacking. Stephen has other qualities that she was lacking, so they really complimented each other. They lived happily for uh, almost 17 years, and then, unfortunately, Gita got ovarian cancer. And she's fighting with it for the last years. Remember three years ago, he had chemo? Three years ago. What is chemo? I don't know. It's, it's, it's a disease. Is that bad? It's bad. So what happened after chemo? I don't know. She went to the doctor. She went to the Mayo Clinic in Rochester. What happened there? Uh, she had to go, yeah, she had, she had tests for her cancer. She had tests. And what did the tests say? Uh, her condition is, uh, I don't know. Stephen is very hopeful about her sickness. He says, Gita's not gonna die. She'll be all right. Hi, Marlena. I feel a little better. I'm getting better. 
thing with Stephen is that he's, I find that he understands me in his own way. I have a learning, a mild learning disability. And um, so, but still in all, I feel in a way that I can understand him because he, he can, because we, we both have something to do and things we can do, but being that we, we, we have disabilities, we can, we, we can relate all the more. Tell me what else is new. I think, well, I, I relaxed all day. That's good. Trying to feel better. Uh huh, that's nice. Yeah. I don't know if this is the right thing to say, but I feel bad that he's not able to express himself. And I'm and I try to encourage him to make him feel as can. And you know something? He has improved a lot. How was your day? It was excellent. What did you do? Uh, well, I worked, I worked on towels today at MDI. Towels? What do they look like? Well, they look like, uh, they look like wash towels. They look like dish towels. Oh, nice. What colors were they? They were purple. Oh, nice. What's your favorite color? Blue. Blue. My favorite color is red. That's nice. You have a nice hat, huh? Yeah. I just like it. Yes. It's always difficult. It's always difficult. I got used to it. I got used to it. It's extremely difficult, but I think if I were married to someone who, it, it, who wasn't disabled or who isn't disabled, more of a problem because that person might be in me be and demanding and that want more out of me so tell me more well i'm going to eat dinner at my parents that's good well, i hope you'll feel better and i'll see you later see you later honey thanks for dropping by and wishing me well you are welcome how do you know that It's in the way he looks at me. I can tell. He gives me such loving eyes. Love is a very abstract concept that many people with autism have a hard time grasping. And it's uh, one of those things that's not concrete. As a scientist, I wish I could put it into perspective as a type of subatomic particle, but it's not. Love is basically more like a force. Like in physics, you have forces, and forces of attraction. And I have a feeling that love is the best way to describe that as um, a force between two people that is neither visible, measurable, or heard. There's no way to quantify it. I'm feeling a little down about myself right now. What? It's been down lately. I've been a little... Sometimes you go through a hard times in your life. I feel like I can't get a girl. I don't get no girls at my school. Everywhere I go is the guys. I go home, I see my stepfather. And are the only women I see are my good, are my good friends are my, my, my sister, like, 
girls that are sort of like my sister home girls, and that's so annoying. You don't see women anywhere. So I, it, it, I, I feel like if, if someone came up to me and said, would you, would you want to go to a women's prison for a week? I would I'll probably say yes. Would you, would you go to a woman's jail for a week and be the only man there? I'd probably say yes. I feel like, you know, if I had a girl, maybe, maybe I'll be happy right now. Maybe I'll be feel good about myself. You know what, Matt? I'm gonna admit something to you. You want me to tell you something? I like girls that are black. I like them a lot. What do you think about that? Do you know what inter -relation interracial relationships are? Inter interracial relationships? It means when different race of people go out with each other. I was reading something on the computer that Black women are really independent, and they said that they're lucky girl, and that, that they're really intelligent women. And I feel like that, you know, I want want a girl like that, but I feel like I can't. Why do you think you can't? Cause you know they're too independent. I need to be more independent. I need mo I need to get a good job and make good money. You get married for love too, but for me, there's more of a practical component as well. Probably 60% practical, 40% emotional. I always love her. That 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 won't change. But for the specific reason of the marriage, that's what it would boil down to. I had told him a few years ago that whenever he was ready to take that next step, that I would be willing to to accept. I, I've yet to hear any kind of indicator that that next step may be taken. Um, I know that we kind of brushed over this, like, when we chatted about it. I do believe you and trust you when, when you've told me that you're, we're in it for the long haul. And I, I believe you, and I do, tr you know, I do trust you, and I, I, um, you know, I, I definitely am in it for the long haul for us, too. And I, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't be here if I wasn't. Um, well, I know that. Yeah. Yeah. I guess I'm just, uh, I was just still kind of just figuring out, like... But there was a conversation that made me a little bit uncomfortable. Oh, you mean at the time? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's uncomfortable for me, too, but it's important. It's important. It's Sometimes I think there's conversations that are uncomfortable for us, but... They're, they're really important to have, or at least to address them, in order to us to understand where we each other are coming from. So, I, I'm not gonna lie, so. But having this on camera, I don't like, I don't, I don't like the idea of having this conversation on camera at all. Okay. It's one of those things that's off camera, I think. Okay, we can stop talking about it. Yes. All right. Thank you for thank you for letting me know. I think yeah. I just feel better that way. Okay. Makes thank you. Feel uncomfortable being okay. on camera. Okay. All right. No, thank you. But you don't have to, so don't worry about it.
There's times that I have questioned whether he really wants to be with me. Within yourself, you think you can communicate. You think you've said something. You think it should be obvious to somebody that's this, this, and this. But again, you go back to the intent. Maybe you are, but then maybe they haven't picked that up. Yes, this is my apartment with Gita. Oh, this is our bedroom. It's beautiful, isn't it? Gita moved here with me, uh, that was uh, 15 years ago. And this is our bathroom. She moved, she had, to, she had to go to, she had a surgery on, in May 2010. Yeah, that was three years ago. I'll take a shower. Okay, maybe at 7.30 if you'll go later to Gita's. I'll go, I'll go see Gita right now. I think they're eating. They're eating, no, they're still eating dinner. They're eating dinner. Yeah, because Eric <laughs> was making it late. Yes. Because Gita wasn't feeling well. I hope Gita will feel better. I hope so. She threw up. She felt nauseous. Yeah. Did she tell you that? Yeah, she told me that. You were there? Yes. Trying to, I'm trying to be positive, man. I'm just... Kind of hard the past couple of weeks. Last week I did something to a girl and it wasn't right. Felt, felt kind of stupid what I did. I was bored. I wanted to see what women felt like. It felt good for a little bit, maybe for like 20 minutes it felt good, but it just felt like you, two things. It felt like you wanted to do it more times, but it just felt like whatever at the end because that wasn't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know that girl. I don't, I don't love her. I just, it felt like, I kind of felt bad for her a little bit. People told me that I talked to a few, two or three people. I kind of want to say it when not that many people around. I kind of want to say it softly because it's not good. People tell me that, oh, pe pe people that tell me, oh, you got ripped off for just touching her ass. People told me that you could have gotten a hand. I could have gotten. People, you know this stuff. People told me that I could have gotten them. People told me that I could have gotten. I could have. People told me that I could have. Her. That's what people tell me. Those four things people told me. To, people told me I could have done those four things with the, with the twenty bucks. Then you got ripped off and and. She told me her name was Diamond. That, that doesn't sound like a real name, does it? I've been together with her for eight years and a lot of people wondering, why are you still this boyfriend girlfriend? A lot of people asking, when are y'all gonna get married? That's, um, it's always a big step for a guy to take and got to make sure it's the right one.
thought about it. She may feel like, oh, I do want to marry you, but maybe now's not the right time. That's, it's not likely, but it's possible she might say that. Uh, I, I, sometimes what she thinks is different than what I think, so. I think before I said yes, I'd want to ask him what in particular had been holding him back the past few years since when I first brought it up. Nobody was exactly at the same place at the same time. I hope for her sake that, that they will eventually make a, a, a firm and formal commitment to each other. Okay, maybe it's just a few simple words or something like that. Maybe it's just a little formal ceremony, something like that, but it means something. It makes a difference. It, it gives a, a base for someone to feel self-confident about giving everything of themselves to the other person without restraint or without holding back. But I think that's just one of the challenges that they've had to work through. So do you still um, continue to think about the future? Like, next steps? Okay. I thought we had that conversation recently about how I wasn't reading your mind and I wasn't yeah. sure, and then, and then you you reassured me that um, you that I I, don't, I shouldn't be I worried about anything. And I was going to see if, anyway, if it's still everything is still the case. Is that still the same thing? <laughs> The idea of marriage, would you? I don't think you've ever been so candid about this conversation before. I guess you've been thinking about it. Well, I know, I'll be honest with you. I think, regardless, I'm always going to be afraid of anything that involves um, major life transition. Right. Right. And Marriage is one of them. As one of them? Marriage is one of them. Yeah, it is. We seem pretty happy, though, as a couple, no? We seem pretty happy as a couple, right? Well, the question is do we feel happy? I do. I, I feel similarly. I am high class. You know that? What? You call me stupid? I'll call you stupid. You know what? I'll tell you something, Matt. I didn't know what the hell happened, man. Let me just tell you what happened. I wish I was not autistic. There. I'm going to say it right now. I don't like it. it. Makes me different. I don't like it. I wish I could have been a normal person. I wish I could have been a normal, regular person. My mom says, be autistic, accept it. I try to accept it. It's hard. Can I be honest with you? If I could change something, if I could, I'm gonna try to change it, but I told my mom this right now because of how disappointed I was. I would rather be a normal man there be an autistic person with a million dollars. There. If God came up to me and says, what do you want? I don't want to be autistic anymore. I wish you can give me a new life. Me? I can start my life all over again. And I want to there. Let me be a normal person. I bet you all the damn people I knew in middle school and high school, they're all in freaking college now. I'm not in college. I, that's what I wanted when I was in high school. I, I dreamed of going to college. And I'm not in college. I wanted to go to college. I wanted to go to college. 
I, I think now I should have graduated college. I should have been in college right now. I should have graduated college right now. I know so many people that went to college and they done right now. I can't hang out with people like that. I can't. Why not? Because they're higher, they're higher than me. Look, they're up here and down here. They're, I'm all the way down here. They're all the way up here. I think. I wonder if you're kind of lower than me. That's what I want. If I found a girl that had a job, had a car, had a home, I can't be with her. She deserves to be with somebody better than me. She's up here, I'm down. That's the way I see it. It's hard, man. It's really hard to accept it, man. Man, this is, this is hard, man. This is tough. This is, this is probably one of the hardest things I have to go through in my life. Don't cry, man, let me cry. I don't want to see a tear come out of your eye. It's hard. What do you think about me crying? What do you think the people, the viewers could think about this? <laughs> Small I can't let that happen. I got no job. I got no car. I'm living with my parents. I should be doing something. I'm a good person, man. I'm not a bad person, man. I'm a good guy. That's just... It hurts, it hurts man. That, that, um, he's like, you ever walk into a room? And you know everybody's talking about you. And he said that's how he feels every day when he leaves the house. You know, so, um, I just want my son to be happy. And, um, I think he needs to come to terms with who he is because he's not comfortable with who he is. And if he's not comfortable with who he is, I don't know how he, he could ever expect anybody else to be comfortable with who he is. I feel sad about Gita. She died last April. She had cancer. That's sad. She was laying down. She was laid to rest. I miss Gita. I miss Gita. When Gita died, we went to the 
uh, to tell him. It was uh, in a work day, and he was there, and when I told him, he just turned white like a sheet. He put his head down on the table. I could tell he was very upset. She was gone. Do you feel like you're still in love with Gita? No, I uh, stopped loving someone. They die because they die. Because Gita died on April 9th. No longer in love. It is a big help for him to go back, maybe go back to work. We encouraged him to pick up life like normal, sort of. I fell in love with Gita for the, for the past 20 years. And they gave, and they, I gave Gita a hug. I gave Gita a hug. I, I, I put my arms I put my arms around her. In physics, we have something called electromagnetic spectrum. How much energy a wavelength has? You go from radio waves to light to ultraviolet rays, gamma rays. And then how it feels for it's kind of on a similar scale. You have different wavelengths. Going from this physical lust, then you go graduate from a general interest in the opposite sex, then you graduate from having a specific intent crush on a specific person. And after that, it kind of evolves into another stage, is the true love stage. You're not having that deep you're thinking about it 24 7 and you have a hard time sleeping because you're so much longer. but it kind of graduates into a more subconscious form let's say you're going from light waves that you can visibly see to ultraviolet they're still there but you can't see them but they're stronger does that make any sense are you sure that was are you sure that was a spot where did you get that photograph i want to say it was taken somewhere around here It's very, this is nostalgic, isn't it? Almost eight years ago. It's always amazing when you look back in time how things have grown and how our relationship has grown. And what we've been through has been really amazing. When you go for a relationship that long, that is a very strong signal. The relationship is meant to be. And at first, um, you kind of curious as to where we were headed. And I uh, remember you tell me you would have been totally happy just pursuing your career and being a single woman. And then... Remember that slide you kind of show on your presentation? The, is it the physics-related slide? Yes, yes, yes. Where you have... The wavelengths. The alpha, the, the beta, beta, the gamma? The delta. The delta. And I think how I have viewed our experience and our adventure together, that our wavelengths might have been different at different times. It was a mutual thing. And I think having those different wavelengths at different times may have been a significant reason why we both may have struggled to really understand where we may be seeing ourselves in the far future. I now feel like our wavelengths are in sync. I feel like we've grown. And I want to only go by what's in here. Absolutely, in here too. And what's in here? It's in here. It's in here. 
and always will be. I say that from the bottom of my. Too, but um, understand. But uh, this has been a remarkable journey, and somebody as beautiful as you deserves the very best and a life of happiness together. And I would very much be honored to have you as my wife. Will you marry me? That's why I wore my vest to seal that. I, I, I was wondering about that. <laughs> but definitely in the Delta region where it's true, <laughs> that's the wavelength we are both in. Your task is not seek for love, but merely to seek and find all the barriers within yourself that you have built against it. That quote really resonates with my life. All the negative things that I heard on autism growing up, it definitely made me feel worthless or less. I had consistently set up barriers to protect myself. It's very easy to not feel like that you can trust people. I thought that perhaps Dave was holding back more than I was. But what I discovered through a lot of introspection is that I was really holding back too. Penny in the water, make a wish. When I make my wishes, I'm clear that I don't tell anybody, okay? And by the way, there's some more ducks over there. Why don't you get film them all over there? It's over with. I'm gone. I gotta go back. I like to get there early. I don't know. It's kind of fun. Six weeks I've been working here for. Here, here's your, here's the one right here. A famous person that had a job like this when he was a young man was Kurt Warner. You don't know who Kurt Warner is? He's the, he's the football player. He's the quarterback who played for the Rams. Long time ago. You don't remember how that Super Bowl happened where it was the last second, um, they were one yard short of winning it? Well, he was the quarterback of that winning game. 
I gotta go back now. Sorry. Gotta go. Sorry, I gotta go back now. I'm back now. Have a drink of water, please. Okay, ready? Okay. All right. So, here. Okay, ready? Mm -hmm. And now, the short film Sophie and Ben, brought to you by the director of Mimi and Donna. Hi, I'm Sophie Sartain, and I'm the director of Mimi and Donna. This is my grandmother's house, where I spent weekends growing up. Hey, Donna. Hi, Sophie. And this is my Aunt Donna. Four, five, six. Donna has an intellectual disability Eight, nine, ten, seven, four, five, and probably diagnosed autism. At age 64, Donna still lives at home with my grandmother Mimi. Mimi is 92 and going strong for 92. I started filming Mimi and Donna in 2009 when it seemed obvious that their life together would not continue like that forever. My grandmother at the time was 92 and she had finally, after decades of resistance, admitted that she couldn't take care of my aunt Donna any longer. I was, I love you and they want you to stay a while. No, they do not want to stay a while. No. Oh, this is hard. I know it is. Now I don't think I can Here. take her. Yeah, I can take her back home. No. I had grown up with my grandmother, and my aunt Donna. Um, and I had seen my grandmother take care of my Aunt Donna for, for decades. I mean, just being this wonderful, loving presence to my aunt my whole life. And while I admired that so much, it made me think about myself and wow, could I, could I be like that? Could I live up to that? And I thought, I can't. I can't do it. <laughs> you know, I'm not that good. I'm not that unselfish. Um, you know, how could I measure up to Mimi? This one. You wanna it was during filming that I started to feel my own son, Ben, might have autism. And I wondered if I was beginning a journey that Mimi had just ended. Because it's a bigger picture. Who's that? Aunt Donna. That's right, Aunt Donna. In my case, um, I 
history of people with autism. And so I was nervous from the time I knew I was having a boy, even and when I was pregnant, that this could be a possibility. We had a meeting with therapists who had been evaluating my son, Ben. So what did you think about what they said? They confirmed he's on the autism spectrum. I just don't want to be here. My partner and I first got the diagnosis for my son when he was about four years old. I have to say, it was scary. I, I was fearful. He's going to be OK. You have these, you know, you have kids and you have expectations of what your life's gonna be like, um, how it's gonna unfold, um, you know, 18 years down the road, they'll go to college, things like that. And then when you hear some uh, diagnosis like that, it kind of throws all of that out the window and, and you really, you don't know what your future's gonna look like. Look, like a little baby right there. See that? What is that? It's a little one. See that? Oh, that's the baby. Oh, don't step on it. Yeah, I'm like giving it. it some shade. Okay, shade is good. But don't step on it. Crushing is not good. Pretty quickly, I got past that and realized that the family members of mine, my grandmother, my mother, could be role models for me. I think my mother as a hero. I think she showed Donna such love for decades and gave her a really good life. And to me, that is so inspirational. The great thing about our situation with Ben is that he is in a wonderful elementary school now and he is able to access services that my Aunt Donna was not able to access when she was a child in the 1950s. She was actually asked to leave the public school system in second because they couldn't accommodate her. And my son actually entered the public school system in second grade. So we started talking with him about autism from probably when he was in first or second grade for him to sort of understand that his brain works differently from the brains of other kids. And he's been open and receptive to understand how he's different. Uh, Angie, let me talk to mommy for a couple of seconds and then we're gonna play together. Okay, see the camera there? Look in the like very center of it. I have Asperger's syndrome, higher degree of autism, and what separates me is well, an entire spectrum. So I guess increased intellectual capabilities, decre decreased social abilities, and as you know, with autism comes obsessions. And I'm basically just a super nerd. He's an amazing kid and has an incredible memory. You know, if he starts talking about his sessions, you can just be blown away by the kind of things that he can come up with. You know, I'm the type of person who was raised in the South, you know, always feeling like I have to say the thing. Um, don't ever want to offend anyone. Well, guess what? My son will just, <laughs> he'll say anything. Oh, Ruby, she's twin sister. We both came out of the same incision in my mom's womb. Right? Yes. That's true. And uh, sometimes I, you know, just have to, you know, cover, cover my, cover my eyes and say, oh gosh, we just say, AKA a C the same C section. That's right. So, you know, it can be hard, but at the same time, it's kind of refreshing. Um, he's very honest, he's very funny, he's very clever. And so sometimes you would say, you know, yes, Ben, your autism, it gives you challenges, but it also gives you superpowers. You know, you could see his, you know, him kind of stand up straight or when he kind of thinks, oh, okay, I can go with that. <laughs> so we've had some good open conversations about his situation and he himself is pretty articulate talking about it. I made a straight rock 
get to go to different areas of the universe in this game. Once you reach adulthood, I think that the perfect occupation would be game designer. I mean, because video games are the new movies. So, I honestly have to say that I would be designing, I just want, I feel like my purpose in life is to design great games that people can enjoy. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it's not good. Ben has two sisters, and they're wonderful with him. And, um, you know, but it can be challenging at times with the siblings, obviously. <laughs> I call that. I call it. No! Ben, stop it! <laughs> I'm bigger than you. <laughs> you want to have the same kind of expectations of all your kids for behavior, you know, doing homework, helping out around the house. But then there are times when you also have to be sensitive to these are different individuals and does Ben get a pass sometimes or not? Um, these, you know, these are sort of daily dilemmas that we have. Um, and that we have to navigate with all three children. Well, really, he's just like your average annoying brother. He's just a different kind of annoying, but he's just my brother, and I spend a lot of time with him, of course, because he's my twin. Oh, Ben is very gentlemanly. He always holds the door open for us, and like he's very sweet and considerate most of the time, even though he can be a little irritating sometimes. Irritating just as in like sibling irritating. Like I don't think of him any differently than I think of Ruby. Are you so irritating? Yeah. Just kidding. has made me a lot more considerate as a person and understanding because I've kind of learned from Ben like not to judge people as much by their actions because it might not be in their control. I think it also made me more open-minded and it helps me to get along with people. You know, what, what Mimi taught me was just this unconditional love that she's had for Donna for decades. And, you know, we make these great advances in, in our understanding of the brain and in, in our understanding of behavior, but yet just to show that kind of love is, is just so timeless and universal, and that will never change. And for me, Mimi will always be a hero because she really demonstrated that to me. Different or what make us human. I mean, imagine if we were all the exact same person. The world would be a boring place. And now since, and since we have differences, that makes the world that makes the world unique. And I feel like autism and Asperger's syndrome are just a difference. Where your brain is just built different way and it's completely fine. To be different because it's what makes us human. Have you ever dated somebody who was on the spectrum before? Gangs or football? Connect with Independent Lens online at pbs.org. You can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Watch videos and explore interactive features. There's always more to every program on our website.
This program is made possible in part by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, John D. and Catherine T. MacArthur Foundation, contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you. PBS, your home for independent film. When I come face to face with these men, I feel an overwhelming sense of satisfaction that I can shut them down. Not unconscious and strangled. She told us what the weapon was. My daughter's dead. So you rushed to her for comfort. There's a maniac out there. Some killer. I'm not stupid. I don't have affairs with my students. A mess people make of love. Don't miss the Inspector Lindley Mysteries, Thursday night on TV 26. On the road. Join an all-star salute to Willie Nelson. 2015 recipient of the Library of Congress Gershwin Prize for Popular Song. Performances by Edie Brickell, Leon Bridges, Buckwheat Zydeco, Roseanne Cash, Anna Gabriel, Jamie Johnson, Alison Krauss, Cindy Lauper, Raul Malo, Luz Nelson, Micah Nelson, Promise of the Real, Paul Simon, Neil Young, and Willie Nelson. Host Don Johnson. Friday at 9 on TV 26. Next time on Luther. The blood on the walls. A serial killer abducts a young mother. The clock is ticking on Kirsten Ross. Luther knows it's the work of a man the police can't touch. It's imperative we stay clear of Burgess. So he finds another way. I really need to catch this man. More than you want to kill And it may cost his career. There's no place in the service for a dirty coppers. What you're doing is wrong. Luther. Join us for the TV 26 premiere of Luther, Saturday at 8. You got a love bite on your neck. He's coming back this morning. I don't like his lips. When he smiles, I can't see his teeth. What does he hide? Please come and talk to me. Talk to you? Now I want you to come upstairs with me and, and get in my bed. Your life's going down the toilet. Do you love him, Loretta? Ma, I love him awful. Oh, that's too bad. Moonstruck. Saturday at 9 on TV 26. Next time on Doc Martin. Why are you here? I would have thought that was obvious. Martin begins therapy. How long will this take to fix? This isn't surgery. Al's first guests include an uninvited one. I knew we should have stayed at a proper hotel. Martin's wish comes true. Hello. Louisa. Marcel. And the new nanny arrives. Now, which one of you is James Henry? Doc Martin. Join us for a new season, Sunday at 8. Some battles worth fighting. Mm. Yeah, what are we all doing here? cold-blooded savages! <laughs> but we to watch without speaking. Not everyone was made. Oh, what mercy sadness brings. No good comes out of doing what comes out of doing what's right. Sunday at 10 on TV 26. A banner from Disney's Snow White may be fortune. See how much on an all-new season of Antiques Roadshow.